All right, guys, Mr. G here back with Total War Three Kingdoms, and I've played Total War since Medieval 1, so for a long, long time, but there's a lot of things buried in the user interface that are new to this game and just aren't in the other Total War series. So we're gonna talk about a few things that you might wanna know how to unlock in Total War Three Kingdoms. First one, so the unit cards you get are these ghosted out units, but if you go into interface, you can actually select classic unit cards and then you pull it up and you get a regular image like you'd expect from a classic Total War series. You can also change it in interface so that you can organize your units not by general's retinue, but by unit type. So if you select that, it'll organize them by melee, ranged, and cavalry, and then generals all together on the left. So if you're like me and you're constantly making your own groups, which you should if you play Total War, this saves you a lot of time because I'm always missing one archer, one melee guy because they're in someone else's retinue, and I'm tracking them down. One other thing that you might like if you're making your own groups and your own formations, you probably don't want the computer choosing formations for you. And you're like, I just I just want a single line. I just want to make a single line. I don't want any of these things because I'm grouping my melee and my ranged guys on their own. You go back to interface and you just click single line and then bing, bang, boom. There you have it. You can drag yourself out in your own line, which you should be doing. You should be doing your own groups um, with your melee guys in group one ranged guys in group two, uh, cavalry, and then I put my generals with my cavalry a lot because they come with horses and uh, they can fight. And then usually siege weapons is number four. And then any groups of wimpy generals like our strategist can have their own group all by their lonesome. I also toy with dismounting the generals that are decent in combat, uh, like vanguard class ones, etc., and or champions uh, and run them kind of as unit commanders. Okay, now let's talk about construction things. Did you know you can instantly construct a building if you have the money to pay for it? Because like we all know, money's the way the world works and money unlocks everything. So let's say I want to upgrade this temple, but I don't want to wait. However many turns it's going to take, I can instant upgrade. There's just that little button right there on the bottom. Boom, instantly upgraded. And so, boom, bing, bang, boom, I have enough cash. I can do it twice. I can upgrade it two levels. So when you're in late game, that's really handy. The opposite is true. You can also instantly destroy buildings and not have to wait a turn. You can just instantly destroy it so that you can pop something new in there. Buttons, the exact same button. One of the biggest and my favorite changes is the diplomacy system, Quick Deal. Quick Deal is your friend. You can click on a deal like Peace, for example, it will show every country that you have a chance at negotiating peace with. You can do this for trade agreements or vassals. Basically what it is, is it shows you possible agreements on the left. You click on those agreements, then it shows you countries that might be possible to work those agreements out. Then if you click make it work, it'll give you an option to try and make it work. However, sometimes those options are pretty terrible. But you know what? The AI in this game will do a lot for an ancillary like a wooden fish or a bunch of food. Those are two solid ways to bump your way up with trading. Definitely a massive improvement over the old Total War diplomacy systems. Last thing we're going to talk about in today's video is spying and espionage because it also functions totally different from older Total War series. So you're going to have your own tab for spying, Undercover Network. You'll select uh, characters uh, from your house or your party to send off as spies and they'll wander off and you won't hear from them for a while. And then you'll go check on the spy screen and they'll have a number underneath. What I didn't know is you actually have to click on uh, noble actions. And as they unlock cover, you can spend that on different actions, whether it's boosting your trade, setting up an undercover spy network, diminishing the trade power of your enemies. You can even make them a general in an enemy army and you'll be able to have line of sight in that army and a special set of abilities they can do to hinder said army, which is a massive improvement over the old system. So you can see right here, we've got line of sight right in an enemy city capital because we've got an undercover network set up there by a spy. First time I was playing, I had no idea you could do this. Hope you guys found this useful. If you want more Total War tip videos, like and subscribe. I'm going to catch you guys later. Mr. G out.